Hey everybody, Chris here with Chris Cross Crafts. Well, today we're going to talk about frames. Now, this ain't no cop show, ain't nobody getting framed other than this. So I made these big 3x4 frames, and uh, we'll hold tight, I'll show you how I did it. I did a few things a little different than normal, and uh, I'll explain why. So let's get right into it. Well, the first thing I did was I made a couple samples. One with a roundover, and one with a chamfer. And I made a couple of designs for the customer to kind of determine which was best, and went from there. So after the customer decided on the chamfer, ugh, anyway, I uh, started ripping down some wood. And you can see that you made this out of poplar so that uh, it would be easily painted, uh, nice clean grain, easy to work with. And I uh, spent quite a bit of time at a table saw getting these roughs on. And I did oversize these because I do plan on uh, hitting the joiner and the planer later. So once you get it all milled, a lot of milling, time to hit that joiner. And the first thing I did was I flattened the face. Now, because I have a six inch joiner, it was important for me to go ahead and sort of rough saw these uh, to width so that I could actually pass them on the joiner. And so get my face flat first and then turn them up on edge using the flat face against the fence and I square that edge to the face. A long process, some, some boards did take multiple passes on the face to get them right. But as you can see, take your time, get it right and everything will come out much cleaner, much better. So after I did all those boards, face and edge, face and edge, face and edge, face and edge. Get all, the, all those edges jointed, make everything look clean. Then once the joiner process is over, Now that the most annoying sound in the world is over, oh, anyway, uh, that's how I get everything set up, using the little red indicator just to make sure everything's right. So once that's set, the dimension is where you need it so you're not going to take off too much. You put the jointed face down and you plane that off to your right dimension. Easy process, just again, more time consuming getting all this middle work done. And notice that I am offsetting that as I go, not using it down the middle or off to one side. Came out with something new. Uh, I've got to do these frame pieces. Well, I needed a way to be able to cut off consistently 35 and 47 inches. Well, obviously, crosscut sled goes 30, 34 to there. So uh, I can still probably do the 35, but the 47, no way. So I took my adjustable uh, side feed support. I ran it out. I ran two screws here, tapped and died. I mounted my square straight fence to that. So this right here has full adjustment like this, okay? I tightened those two down, got this mounted. Now I can run this along that way and actually clamp that where it needs to go. And that's gonna be my stop for my 47. So now I've got a way to create that stop consistently well beyond the size of my sled because clearly it wasn't gonna go to that side. Micro jig for the win again. All right, so now that we've got the stop set up, I'm uh, squaring one end uh, to the jointed face. That way I get a nice square end on one side, and then I'm able to put my stop in there and get them cut to length. Now since these were longer boards, again, I had to make some accommodations to make it work. Uh, but this micro jig setup has definitely changed my shop. And this is basically how I set that up now. I use my sled, I line my mark up uh, to one end, clamp it down, and since I have that notch where the blade curve passed through, it gives me a perfect layout as to where that needs to go. So once that's in place, you can slide your stop over, clamp the stop down, and because that's not actually part of the sled, that's going to stay where it is so that when I move the sled, it clears that and gives me a nice edge to start with. Off camera, I did go ahead and cut these to the right width so everything was correct that way. And if you'll notice that I did take time to med double check and measure everything before I start cutting them all because there'd be nothing worse than cutting them all wrong. But anyway, now it's time to start the half lap. And I opted for the half lap and as you can see it'll do 
very well for this particular joint, and I'll explain that later. Uh, but it does take time. You get yourself set up with the data stack, and you just work your way up until you eliminate the sliver that falls in the middle, and you know your right dead center. And that's kind of what I was shooting for, was sort of right dead center. And once you get the right thickness stayed out, you're good to go. So traditional frames are made like this. They're with a nice miter joint, very strong, aesthetically pleasing. And if they're natural or stained, this looks really good. Now on small frames, especially this works perfect. But when you get a big frame like mine, that's uh, you know, 36 by 48, needs something a little more. So what I've opted to go with, especially since this is gonna be painted, is to go with a half lap joint. This half lap allows for a lot of glue surface, and when assembled, this is a very strong joint and it will hide that seam pretty well. This is gonna do very well for my application, especially since these are gonna be so big. And you can see that turned out really well. I did use a stain or a paint rather that allowed that grain to still protrude through just a little bit to give a nice appearance. And uh, well, at the end, you'll see this is gonna be the best option for my set of frames. So there's a lot of ways to do picture frames. This is just one of many. And now that the data stack is all set up, it's time to make sure that the length is correct so that when I do this half lap, I'm left with the exact overlap that's needed. And so I did a sample piece, came up with the right width that I need, and here we go. Now I'm just milling that away. Now I will say a data stack is probably not the cleanest option to go with here. Uh, a router with an end mill would have probably been better, uh, but a data stack is what I had. I did consider alternatives to that as well, but went with the data stack just simply because I had so many to do and it still worked. I did have to do some light sanding on each of the overlaps to make that uh, exactly the way I needed it, but it worked out just fine. So whatever work method works best for you, use it. Don't be get don't get stuck in a box just thinking you got to use just one way to accomplish a goal. As a woodworker, find a way to make it work and do what's best and easiest for your application. And it's a lot of rinse and repeat when it comes to these. And some of you are going to gripe at me for butting that directly into the fence. I don't care. You know, I had plenty of uh, support on the material. It wasn't going to kick on me, so I wasn't too worried. In this application, it worked out just fine. Now time to do a little assembly. Now, of course, I'm using the micro jig match fit uh, bench that I'm working on. Still haven't gotten that finished, but I'm utilizing it as we go. Putting on a little bit of glue and I'm utilizing these uh, square edges to keep everything square for me so that it makes it easy to lay out and easy to assemble. So uh, since I had so many of these and they were large, I wanted to keep them not only square, but I wanted to be able to keep them laid out correctly as I went along the process. And I have become quite the avid fan of this mi micro jig match fit setup. Uh, it is very versatile and makes quick work of a lot of different applications in my shop. And as you can see here, uh, this is just a close-up of the same process. Put a little bit of glue on the flat area and on the shoulder. And I did that on both surfaces. Flip that over and I'm putting some 23-gauge uh, pins in it just to hold it in place while the glue dries. These large clamps work really well. Put it right in the middle, clamp it down, clamp it in, and it uh, does pretty well. And there's all the clamps glued and tacked and ready to start more milling on them and it's at this stage that I start rabbiting out the center and as part of this process I'm doing a different rabbit instead of doing one deep rabbit I'm doing two rabbits one that'll house the uh, back that's on the top area and then another that'll have the glass the mat and the actual print that the customer will be providing uh, after the fact but I wanted the back to have plenty of meat since this frame is so long to be able to support that. And so I'm doing a step rabbit and uh, two layers of that. Because these frames are so big, they kept wanting to move on me. So I used my straight edge with the match fit system clamped to the bench, and then I was able to then butt that in. And I needed to raise that up off the bench because of the second, the deeper rabbit, uh, the bearing was, was hitting the workbench. So this lifted it up off the workbench and allowed me to get that rabbit cut without the bearing rubbing on the top. 
And you can see the two rabbits there. It's a little different, but we're going to try something new. And it worked out really well. But I'm left with those rounded corners. So now it's time to square those up. To do that, I just took a simple flexible ruler and uh, increased that line all the way to the corner just to give me something to reference by. And it just didn't need to be perfectly clean. I wasn't shooting for, you know, a really high-end joint here. I just needed a nice sort of square corner or a little beyond square uh, just to be able to put the back and the glass and everything in without any problems. And so a little bit of hand chisel work, but mark it out, chisel it, mark it out, chisel it, and here we go. So what we're left with is a nice clean square corner uh, that you'll never see anyway. Okay, I know you guys think I'm weird and I'm out there and well I am, but you, you might think I'm over the top with micro jig match fit. Well, this is nothing fancy. I'm already in the process of building this bench anyway, still haven't got it done because I got other projects. Anyway, these frames were, I'm trying to sand the edges and they're just so big, they're just all over the place. So I made a corner block there, a corner block there, and a corner block there. This keeps this tight and keeps the thing from racking around. So now I can safely sand that edge and that edge, rotate 180 degrees, and repeat the process on the next two edges, and the frame is done along the edge. Nice thing about that is it's set. So yeah, I'm a little wackadoodle about micro jig match fit, but when it works, it works. It's at this stage of editing that I realized I'm missing some footage. And someone either forgot to hit the record button or, well, I have to just get a new cameraman. That's all I can tell you. He just missed the shot. What he missed was me putting that nice chamfered edge along the edge of the frames. Not a fan of chamfer, but it is what it is. It's what the customer chose. Also, this is the first seal coat. I chose to use the Easy Vinyl Sealer from Mohawk on this. Uh, the, the Easy Vinyl Sealer gives more elasticity underneath and gives you a better result on your top coat. Uh, the downside is it was too cold to spray, so I had to do it with an aerosol. Now, once the sealer is dried and you go between coats, I always use the uh, 220 grit silicon carbide Ultraflex pads from Clingspore. Those things are fantastic. They leave everything nice and flat and prepped for the next coat. And after three coats of sealer on both sides, it's time to put the black enamel. Uh, this black enamel from Mohawk is amazing. It's great coverage and goes on very easy. And I applied three coats of each uh, to each side to give it a nice even coat. And uh, it's a satin, so the customer wanted something with low sheen. And this turned out to be exactly what they needed. Now finishing's not without its problems. And in this case, I had changed the tips over to a uh, wide fan tip and something went wrong and it did it on three different cans so I'm going to blame the tip. It created a horrible drip and well right there is where I noticed it and there was nothing I could do and I wasn't about to redo all of this again so I wiped that off and got it nice and clean while it was still wet. You could have just left it on and maybe sanded it. But this is what I went with. I wiped it clean and then, then applied that on there. And this is the back, so I was okay with doing that. And if it would have failed, I would have sanded it off anyway. This was just a quick fix. But I put the normal tip back on and got the rest of it done. Got the drying rack going with the uh, micro jig match fit dry rack system. Uh, patent pending, copyright, uh, all those good things. Yeah, sorry, I'm a micro jig guy now. Anyway, so then it's time to cut the backs. So once I get all everything done, everything's painted while the paint's over there kind of curing, I went in and got the backs all cut to fit and got everything dimensioned. And this is a eighth inch hardboard is what I chose to use for the back. And that worked out pretty well, easy to cut, easy to mill. And you know, when it's against the wall, you're not gonna see it anyway. I wanted to kind of lay these all out the same. So I did make some measurements and I've got just a thin tape uh, against the side there and I'm running equal screws along the, each side 
uh, to lock that board in. That's the other reason why I like that wider uh, rabbit is it gave me meat to actually hit with the screws. And I believe in all these five frames took 110 screws is what I used to lock the backs on. And you can see my scrap block there I used to gauge my measurements. And there it is all done. Uh, you can just barely see some grain through there. That black enamel turned out well. The overlap joints hid. And the customer's going to make some, uh, get the glass made, the mat, and, and the prints put in. All in all, a fun project. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below if you got any questions or thoughts. All right, well, there you go. This is the uh, picture frame video. Hope it was helpful a little bit. And uh, I guess uh, it's a wrap. Off to the customers.